Congressman Sarbanes, welcome to The Voice of America. It is always a pleasure to have you in our shows. Now, about a year ago, uh, President Barack Obama was inaugurated uh, at the White House, and this historic event generated uh, a tremendous uh, amount of enthusiasm all around the world. Now, you as uh, a member of Congress who started uh, his second term uh, at the same year with uh, Mr. Obama's election and who also ran on the same uh, ticket, Democratic Party ticket with him. Where do you attribute this uh, enthusiasm for uh, Obama's leadership? Well, first of all, thanks, George, for having me again. I want to say what an important resource Voice of America is, and I thank you for all your years of, of service in that regard. Um, I remember that inauguration. It was a very cold day. Um, we were sitting out on the, on the platform. Tremendous excitement and enthusiasm. Uh, as you point out, it was the beginning of my second term. One of the reasons I was so excited is because when I came in during my first term and we changed the Congress over from Republican to Democrat, there were a lot of hopes of the things that we could achieve, but we still had the former president was still in place, and many of the things that we were pushing for he didn't necessarily agree with. So one of the reasons we were so excited uh, as members of Congress who had the same agenda in mind as the president was now we had a friend, we had an ally, we had somebody who was going to work with the Congress to try to implement a strong agenda. Not just domestically, but of course right from the start there was an expectation, which I think the president has fulfilled, that he would conduct American foreign policy in a more respectful way in a way that uh, promotes engagement and discussion, and that that would, have, that would be a departure from the way things have been conducted before. And I think that that's one of the reasons there was so much excitement on the international scene. Yes, as one of our students uh, that we interviewed this past week on the first anniversary of President Obama pointed out, this hope is beginning to diminish a little bit in view of the fact that many of the world's problems remain and uh, we have not really uh, turned around all the difficulties uh, domestically and in the foreign policy arena. But uh, uh, having said that, what do you think are the prospects of um, working now in the second year of the Obama administration towards uh, uh, better relations with our European allies, uh, perhaps uh, addressing the issues of uh, climate change, you know, that uh, are very much on the mind of Europeans, and uh, ag again, working towards uh, peace and promotion of uh, human values. Uh, in the second year of the Obama administration? As you say, very high expectations when the president came in, um, impossibly high expectations in some ways. And so there's, there's always going to be that period where things kind of come back down to earth a little bit uh, because all of the challenges that face us, both domestically in the United States and the international challenges, are significant. And it's going to take a lot of hard work, sometimes very tedious work, and consistent work and determination to meet those challenges. So it's inevitable that there will be some sort of downtick in, in these hopes and aspirations. But I think if people ask themselves the question, has there been a good beginning? Are we beginning to set the foundation for um, discussions and engagement on the international uh, at the international level that over time will improve many of these situations that we face? I think the answer to that is absolutely yes. And I think that you will continue to see the atmosphere improve in the second year for, for many of the reasons you just noted. The President has identified that there are issues that are universal issues, universal concerns for people opportunity, education, the environment, which is a critical, critical issue. Now, the United States is, is moving not as quickly as I'd like to see um, to get these measures in place to address climate change, but moving much more dramatically than we had been. We have accelerated the pace there. The President is very committed to those things. 
when you identify issues like the environment as something that you're committed to and recognize that others around the world have an equal level of commitment, it presents new opportunities and potential for collaboration. Now, uh, you as uh, an American of Greek descent and uh, a leading member of the Congressional Hellenic Caucus, uh, how do you see this uh, first year of the Obama administration in relationship with uh, Greece um, in terms of the Greek-American experience? Right, right. Well, for starters, I think this idea of, of uh, a more respectful level of engagement generally with our allies and, and other countries around the world, that applies in Greece's case as well, number one. So you have that kind of baseline new positive attitude in the way we deal one with the other. Um, secondly, in the particular case of Greece, I think if you look at the administration, you will see that in key positions there are now very knowledgeable people when it comes to the issues that affect Greece and that Greece cares about and of course that are important to the United States. And when you have knowledgeable people in place, then they're going to conduct themselves in a way that is sensitive to those concerns. So with that knowledge, I think, comes a level of sensitivity to Greece's perspective on some of these issues, which bodes very well for continuing to build a strong relationship going forward. Uh, we're looking forward to the um, relationship developing between the new Prime Minister, Papandreou, and President Obama going forward, perhaps uh, with a visit in the coming year. Uh, so I think that all of these issues that have been concern, have concerned us for some time, um, to particularly the Greek American members who are in Congress, those are going to get the kind of uh, sensitive attention and focus from knowledgeable people in this administration that we'd like to see. Now, in, in broader terms, in the second year of the Obama administration, what uh, should we expect to see? It's no surprise that the economy for our nation and really for the world continues to be the primary focus. And to be very candid, the United States' ability to be a constructive partner in the international community depends on its ability to be in a sound and strong position in terms of what's happening here at home. So I think that the, the number one priority for the president is going to be getting the United States back on its feet in terms of the economy. That doesn't mean that the foreign policy issues won't continue to be very important, um, but the economy is going to be a number one issue. And thinking about how we can collaborate internationally. I mean, Greece is facing a very difficult time as well right now, as you know, with its economy. So it's important for us to share ideas to think about how we can cooperate and collaborate in terms of addressing some of these economic issues that are cutting across. Um, but that's going to be a number one uh, focus. Secondly, the ongoing uh, attention that we have to give to this uh, battle against extremist elements internationally um, is one that I think is at the top of the president's list. We've had some recent incidents, as you know, here in the United States, which have raised the anxiety level again. And so that will also be, uh, will be a focus. What's important, George, is that whatever the particular issue is, that it be approached and addressed in an atmosphere of engagement and cooperation where we're listening to each other, where the United States is listening to its partners, its allies, and others across the world, so that together we can find good solutions. Congressman Sarabin, we thank you for your insight and for your analysis. And we want to take the opportunity to wish all the very best to you for the new year and, uh, and of course, to President Obama as well. Thank you very much, George.